Hi guys, this is a redirect to my reaction to Legend of Korra episodes 7, 8 and 9. This is getting really, really serious. It's, it was very intense watching these episodes. Uh, I was just like, God, especially the last two episodes, they were just so shocking. Like, damn, like that bloodbending, like when Tarlok was bloodbending Korra, I was so shocked. I was so disturbed by it because I've, like in general, like bloodbending, is just like such a cruel type of bending because it's so powerful and it's so personal because you're literally controlling people's bodies and I, I felt so disturbed by it as well as the visions that Aang sent to Korra for guidance on like to let her know like what's really going on and to warn her of Tarlok it took her quite a while to really figure it out but anyway um so let's start in the beginning so in episode seven we found out that asami's dad is actually working for the equalist because he wants to avenge um against the benders for um for a bender in the past actually killing his wife so a firebender in the past actually killed his wife so that's why he's siding with the equalist and asami oh man oh, this poor girl i feel so bad for her it, for so many reasons the first reason is the fact that her dad is working for the equalist so um that came as a real shock for her it, like a real betrayal for all of them actually um so basically asami invited mako kura and bolin to stay at her mansion she's a rich girl and like they were enjoying themselves in her mansion but Cora came across like a conversation that um her dad was having with someone and Cora like like he was like saying um what was he saying he was saying something about needing to strike <clears throat> so Cora was getting suspicious of um Asami's dad um so so she wanted so she told Bei Fong and the police force about this so Bei Fong started searching the mansion for any weapons that they're creating for um for uh weapons for the equalist movement for Amon and they didn't find anything initially they didn't find anything that like they're making for them um but there was actually a secret factory underground and Bei Fong was able to find this because of her amazing badass seismic sense. Uh, wow. Whenever she did that ability where she was sensing her environment, it was just really cool. The effect that was being used, it was very similar to the effect that Toph has to figure out what's around her. Um, so she's, she's a lot like her mom and uh, yeah. Um, anyway um so yeah they were able to actually find out that um her dad is actually working for the equalist but her dad was actually like she put them all under a trap so when they when um bei fong tenzin and Cora actually went down um to find that secret factory it was all actually a trap they, they were lured into a trap and the gate was closing behind them um so uh, her dad was like using these metal armored suits to fight them and I absolutely love the technolo technological advancements in this series as well as in um, in the Avatar series as well like it's amazing the kinds of inventions that are created in the series and in the previous series as well um, it's quite fascinating um, these weapons and these new technologies being used to fight back um, but it was really sad to learn that all this time her dad was actually siding with the equalists who are criminals to, you know, the police force, to everyone, to society. Um, so, um, so Sami, like, he was trying to, like, tell her that he, he only did this because he wants to avenge his wife's death, but he can't actually bring her back when you try to get revenge like I totally understand your anger and your frustration and like you know you want to get revenge but like it's not actually going to get you anywhere though like you can't even bring her back if you do that do you get me um so I'm just glad that Asami did not side with her dad and I was actually quite shocked that she actually electrocuted him with the glove so um well I didn't expect that but I expected that she would say no I'm not gonna side 
with you and the equalist this is not what I'm about you guys are criminals for a reason um and yeah so like she basically um disagreed with her dad um so yeah he went to jail um, but obviously like the equalist movement are still around and they're causing so much havoc so in the last two episodes um bay fong she was really disappointed in herself for like not figuring this out sooner um so she started she wanted to get some rest um she and she resigned her position in the police force um so i guess she's not a policewoman anymore um because someone else took charge and Tarlok is like his advisor and like one of the leaders now um so that was really bad that Tarlok took over well, well he was he's not the leader of the police force but he still has a high position in the police force so that was really bad because he was suggesting and actually did I can't believe the council agreed to this Tenzin will oppose this but the other council members said that it was okay for him to actually um arrest all the non-benders even though they're non-benders, like they're innocent people, like just because they're non-benders doesn't mean that they're part of the equalist movement. But how could you do that? That you like it has to be innocent until proven guilty. It can't be the other way around. That is so corrupt. That way of thinking is so corrupt. Like there's a law for a reason. There's a democracy for a reason. Like you've got to give people the benefit of the doubt until you find actual evidence to prove that these people are part of the equalist movement. Just, oh my days, man! Like it's just it, it just felt so wrong when he was imprisoning them all, and Cora and them were like proper trying to stop it, but she couldn't do anything. Like she was completely outnumbered. Um, so. So basically, Mako, Bolin, and Sami, they all got arrested, and Cora couldn't do anything about it. Um, so, um, she tried to, like, she tried to, like, talk to Tarlok in the office, but Tarlok actually, <clears throat> because she wanted her friends to be released, um, but instead Tarlok fought her with waterbending, and it was a really intense fight. And damn, like, Cora went in. But what was extremely shocking was the fact that Tal accused bloodbending afterwards. And what was even more shocking was that Cora said that you can't use bloodbending unless it's a full moon. Um, <clears throat> so that was a shock. I didn't know that you can only do bloodbending if there's a full moon. Um, but it, it seems that with Tarlok and um, Yakone, they can use blood the blood bending any time of any day um it's like a rare hereditary trait i guess um so yeah that's quite interesting but it's very scary a very scary ability in my opinion one of the most terrifying elemental abilities to have um i think the most terrifying elemental based ability to have because it's so like personal like you can literally control people and make them do anything you want them to do so that's why it's so scary when he was like controlling Cora's body to get inside the prison and I was just like oh man it's just so it was so disturbing seeing that um oh man th this thing this whole love triangle thing is so pissing me off now I got so frustrated with Mako and like Cora, like you are blatantly flirting now in front of Asami and I just I felt so bad for Asami and it's just so wrong doing this like regardless of whether it's open or not you can't do this if you're in a relationship with someone you have to be honest with that person if you do not like them anymore I can't believe this guy is two-timing and not just that but actually showing that he's two-timing right in front of Asami and just seeing Asami's face just says it all of just how betrayed she feels now and just how hurt she is like how can you not be transparent I just I hate liars and I hate cheaters this is not how it should go you're supposed to be a main character but you just come off as a liar and a cheater and Cora it doesn't help the fact that you're kind of encouraging him as well to do this cheater behavior in a way um it's just Asami deserves so much better than that guy I like Mako, don't get me wrong, and he has every right to, like, take care of his friends and be worried for them, but it felt way more than just friendship, you know? 
and Asami, she knew, she like, she caught on that, and she actually found out from Bolin that they actually kissed, so I was just, I was so heartbroken for her, and I've been in that position myself in the past, and it sucks so much, so it's just, oh man, just, I hate those kind of people, I hate those kind of men who just like, play along with your feelings, she just, she deserves so much better. I don't know what she's going to do. Because she's really into Mako. And Cora likes Mako too. But she's like accepting that he's got a girlfriend. So she'll stay away. But like still like. You're still around. So it's not helping. Um, Mako man. You need to be more honest. It's pissing me off now. It's just it's so dishonest. And it's just. I feel so bad for Sami. And, like, Ang was, like, when uh, Cora was imprisoned, Ang was, like, trying to, like, warn her about, um, trying to warn her about Tarlok and Yakon. So, Yakon uh, is basically Tarlok's dad, and, like, um, he was basically going to go into life imprisonment. So, Sokka was the one that actually gave him that sentence. Um, but Yakon actually bloodbended all of them, and he actually freed himself from that court. And that was so scary the way he was he blood bended all of them in the court. Damn, that's such a powerful ability. But Ang with his uh, avatar state, he actually managed to stop him and he actually managed to take away his blood bending ability. So I'm glad that Kura got her information that Tarlok is Yakon's son, so Tarlok is a major threat. Um so yeah, um but um uh, I mean, Tarlok now doesn't have any bending anyway because Amon came and actually took away his bending. So I'm glad that was done, even though I'm not siding with Amon, obviously. But I'm glad that Tarlok is no longer a proper threat now, um, I guess, um, for now at least. Um, so Korra actually did manage to escape, so I'm glad about that. It was a lucky escape and I'm glad that she's now reunited with everyone else. This whole love triangle thing, I swear to God, if it continues throughout the se whole series... I love this series, but if that continues, I'm just gonna, sh you know, I'm just gonna express my frustration frustration in every single episode if it continues like in every single episode because that is so dishonest and that is not that is completely unacceptable like doing that to your own girlfriend to your own partner um that's just my own view but anyway um so yeah those those are my thoughts what did you think of these episodes let me know and stay tuned for more